for Ghidra. So, uh, so far we gathered this information, we got the folder and the whole thing. We, un we decompiled that, then we unpacked that. So we got some idea about the, you know, main entrance here, the super class, uh, a maze activity. And we know there are two services over here. And uh, we got some other information about his permission and so forth. Now it's time to go and do some research on the classes, uh, the exploit. So if I try to open this file here in my environment, I get nothing actually out of it. And the reason why is because it's code. This is a compiled uh, DEX file, um, which actually, you know, is in bytecode. And uh, if I just open it here, uh, it's going to be just a binary file. That's why it doesn't, you know, it tells me it's a binary. I can't do anything about it. Um, as you can see, it's all binaries. So this is not very helpful. We can't find some string here, but still is a hell lots of work. So uh, <clears throat> we go to command line, and as I told you before, we run this command, you know, Ghidra. Run Ghidra, okay? Or Ghidra run, sorry. So I run this Ghidra run. And you see, this is based on Java, and here is one of the latest versions. So it says, okay, no active folders here, no active project. So the first thing you got to do, you open a new project. I said a new project, a non-shared project. I need to find the you know directory for that. I go here. I said, mm. and make a new one. Hydra. Analysis um, zero. Select this one, and this is gonna be app zero. Call this. And all right, now I have this here. Um, now it's time to introduce this uh, unpack file. I mean class files. The binary file, we couldn't get anything out of it here. Here is our target file. Classes dig. So here it combines all the files, all the classes together. You might say, okay, if you have some Android development experience, you know that you might need to make a couple of files. I mean, if we just you know show you some image here. Android Studio yeah, development some you know if you just you know make something you see you have a whole bunch of files different classes for different objects you have different files and classes and so forth you know if you just see this here on right side is um, a little bit unclear but you know maybe this picture here so uh, for different objects element you know like text box like this box they have their own classes and so forth and the other very well separated and neat. However, things here are very twisted, you know, together. And we have only one DEX file. And the reason why is because DEX um, is a compact file for us to, uh, that actually is optimized, is compiled to gather all the classes, compile that and make them all together to make a nested, you know, an optimized and compact file. That's why we only see one binary file. So now I said import file, and here is, let me come back and um, go to APKs, and um, here is unpacked file, and I click here, I select the DEX file, and I said import, and said, hey, this uh, class seems to have nested files, because there are different classes, subclasses inside of that. So select an import mode, I said single file, just do it in this way. 
then say okay which language uh, I don't know exactly the data even though I got some information here you know about the file but uh, you know about minimum SDK maximum SDK and so forth so this can actually help me out to figure out this text for format but uh, what I do here instead I select basically text base file I said okay I imagine this is the base not any specific uh, um, SDK or Android version like KitKat or P or um, um, I don't know Lollipop and so forth select that said okay so I just ignore this is here is just the result and um, I got this one and I double click on that it takes a while to do the analysis it says okay it hasn't been analyzed would you like to analyze it now yes here it's uh, you know Gidra shows us a whole bunch of different tools we can actually take advantage of in order to perform more in demand analysis for example ASCII strings apply data shifts call um, um, convention ID data references uh, decompiler parameter ID um, switch analyzers you know a stack even for runtime analysis when you run the code and then uh, emulator you want to see okay what happened at runtime what is the source of commands what's going on here at runtime when something is you know is under the execution so we have a whole bunch of different tools but we actually for now we just uh, we are happy with this and we are going to do our basically heuristic here I said okay analyze and let's see what it gives us So um, here, if you go over here in the, in the uh, main window, classes or listing here, you can see the you know bytecode similar to assembly code. You know, it's like the assembly of the X file. So if you just just a quick reminder, X bytecode, it's gonna be like that. You have Java file, you compile that, you get class file in normal Java environment like JVM, like your PC. And you write a Java code, you get like a JAV file, a class file, and then you get a pack, pack of JAV file. And that's gonna be your executable file. Here we have the X file, which is uh, optimized and manipulated for Dalvik virtual machine. So Dalvik virtual machine is the virtual machine of Android, okay? It's the equivalent of the JVM for PC. Dalvik is that one. And here you can see the other one. If I, if I just show that big uh, VM, um, you you can actually see different you know versions how it works, the structures, and so forth. Here the metadata of that class. You know we have dex file, header file, constant pool, class definition, class n one two n, and then data. We have the same you know architecture here. So if you're more interested to understand this one, um, I can give you one reference and which virtual machine internals So it's gonna be kind of a um, thesis type of thing and it tells you um, more information, in-depth information about Dalvik internals, about the different structures you see here. So for our analysis, I make everything easy for you. You don't need to walk through that in order to understand the whole thing. But if you wanna get very in-depth information about this, then there we go, you have this resource here. <coughs> But anyway, for our analysis, you don't need to um, bother ourselves because I will break down everything for you.
code browser. So here is the, you know, it actually shows us the whole part header file. You know, here you can find information about header file, about different classes here. They are all nested here. And you can see we have huge, huge amount of code here. We have the cave part, which is empty and data part, data section, entry points, and so forth. But it's still, you know, it's a big deal. You know, it's not easy to understand the whole of that or just a simple, a small app, you know. It's a big deal, you know, it's a lot of file, a um, lot of content here. So if I, you know, come back and just open, you know, APK file, you can, it's just 29K and here we have lots of files. So just imagine when an app is few megabyte, then how much it could be even huge. I mean, sometimes it's just resources, but anyway, at the end of the day, we have lots of, we have lots of classes here. So, so how we should get it started? You might ask, all right, so what can I do? It's too ambiguous and what can I do? So I would go here and to this, um, you know, decompiled uh, manifest file, which we actually obtained that uh, through APK2. Here is our main entrance file, MA's activity. So it gives us good, you know, clue about where we can get it started. Now I go to the classes here, to symbol three classes, and the first activity name was Amazed. So if you go over here, we have Amazed activity. This is the class. So, um, on the right side, you can see also the Java code. You know, if I go over here, click on that. So, MA's activity here, this is the constructor function. You know, the constructor function is like Java, you know, constructor, construct um, Java. When you define a class, the, the function or method has the same name of the class, that's construction class. So here you can initiate some, some stuff, you know, some parameters and so on. And uh, you need to have a little bit Java knowledge. If you don't have any Java knowledge, I would recommend you take my previous course. I have another course, uh, you, or you might be able to find it. This is about ransomware in Java. And in the first chapter, I believe, I explained the whole thing, you know, about Java. So you have a quick, uh, review about the job, I think. So here is quite bare, it doesn't tell us anything. Um, so that's why we need to a little bit, you know, do it down here about these functions. We have unqueued here. So here is unqueued when you create something. So if just a quick reminder again, if you go like APK uh, lifecycle, you actually see this uh, you can find some some architecture like that so if I try to open this up so we start with on create when you, you know touch you know an app on your screen then you have on a start on create actually put some initial variables and things like the settings about the window and so forth on a start on resume on pause on stop and destroy and so forth so um i try to put them actually in the um i try to actually just remind you about the uh, fundamentals of you know apk app development and it's life cycle. So it's it's very important here to know this knowledge, have this knowledge here. So as you can see here, we have some information, some general information. So what does it do here? We create an ins, uh, instant, and then we set a system, get a system service alarm. Here we have check cast. Um, it seems here we have some sort of runtime verification because app want to make sure it gets the same alarm that it's actually seeking for here it makes a new intent so it's getting more interesting because intents essentially are like a small piece of code like you can see them like micro code like functions so then it set up an intent on this receiver alarm receiver that received from here then we set some broadcast 
and uh, then here we have we have a timer sort of thing and here we have 10,000 uh, millisecond which is about 10 second ish and so it, we have a, like an interval something that actually every 10 seconds actually go and check something from Allah so maybe it receives some commands or maybe it can be getting some updates about people location when they move anywhere after 10 seconds each 10 seconds actually get updates and uh, then afterwards we have um, a view here so this app essentially show a view and set it to the contact uh, content view to show some graphical element to sound more legitimate because if you double click on an app and it doesn't show anything it sounds very spooky right and you said oh maybe it's a virus but if you show some graphical thing maybe you said oh okay it's a normal app it's like the others so it doesn't really draw your attention okay so that's all we get from here right now um I think um, very exciting so we need more information for analysis here so one way is to go all of the code and you know just try to find the functions and read them the another way around is go back here again and we know we have two services and uh, another actually code here you know another class we have service runner we have service position service so let's go and take a look at the class and the internal what we can get in these services probably there, are, there should be something interesting inside of services um runner so for runner i go over here r and there we go i found it And here we have some interesting stuff. We have dump SMS. So here it actually get the SMS file. Here is online. So here check for the connection. Is this phone device actually online or not? Prepare send. So it sends some information so of course let me first find the real entry point here so here is the constructor here all right so in this um, function over here runner uh, in the runner class it sent the host so here presumably I mean this is for test of course is it could be actually the hacker or the developer server this is the port here is um, the IP address of that machine, remote machine. We have send data, so things are getting more, and still, you know, things are getting really more exciting. So we have a still, now we have some proof that something is going on here. So now let's try to understand this analysis and this internal. We have a function, it's called work, and let's actually analyze it from here. This sounds more interesting. Um, we have some variables, some linked list here, a string, a string builder, boolean here. So here, first line is checking to make sure is this online or not. The phone is online or not. If it's not online, then it actually get the GPS coordinate, put it in this link list, and then it get actually network coordinate because GPS is more accurate but it's lengthy it takes some time for calibration and sometimes it's off and the network is the other way around so if you turn off your GPS but you still have network that's your phone can be actually um, recognized and can be found on the map okay based on the routers and internet things so here 
you try to get the information about the location when the phone is not connected to internet and put it inside of a link list because it wants to have it like a history thing and when it get connected else the other way yeah it's time for uh, stealing and it still gathered all the gps information and network information and invoke this function steal so essentially so far is spying the location and presumably the other side the, the you know these criminal cyber hackers you know people like that they want to have they have like industrial platform or something like that they want to target a victim and see where it goes on the map it's it's actually kind of um kind of industrial spyware so they target a person here it's not just a mass spyware or mass you know key logger or something like that for stealing credit card only so they want to see where this person goes it could be even case of a government back you know spyware this sort of thing but anyway the next function is a steal function let's go to a steal function so what does it do for us <clears throat> so here is the bytecode binary of that and the X binary here is this Java code. So essentially, the nice thing about Gidra is it also gives us Java code, more readable, you know, Java code here, so we can analyze it. Uh, and it's not actually inside of the, the X code, so it decompile and you know make it neat and clean for us. So we have some um, variables here, local variables. Then we have. Uh, reference then here we have a stolen data and it goes to XML format we have some XML format XML foo some classes like that perhaps this is XML format they want to show it in a structural way and uh, that's why I guess on the other side there is actually a web online web application or desktop application that show it on a map on a real map because they take XML to organize data and I mean, just real quick, if you are not familiar with XML, I try to add all the information that could be helpful for you. XML, what is XML? You can read about it here. I add a link for you and and how it looks like, it's like that. It's just like JSON. JSON is like alternative to that if you heard about that. It's quite easy, you know, put some tags. For example, he said location, location here. Said SMS, SMS is then later on on the other side you can better extract data. We have some metadata, you know, what is which data is related to what. That's the way of um, putting data for organizing that, formatting that. So you put data, stolen data in XML format. Uh, that gives us some clues sometimes at runtime. Uh, we can put some debugger here some breakpoint here and see okay where data goes and how it look like you can also do these things in at runtime. time um, and then if you go down here uh, it gets some start time dumping IDs what does it take here it gets Android version gets actually phone services get device ID, the serial number of phone, through this class, telephony manager. Then it gets IMEI, that's for the cell unique serial number of phone, and allows people to actually do a lot of things, actually, if, you, if people have your IMEI. And, uh, I mean, if you want to have more information about Number. it's something you know on the back of your phone this number here it is unique and you need to really keep it secret it's like your you know mac address something like this um device id here it gets sim cards you know um serial number i believe um yes yeah, sim serial number network operator name, even the SIM card operator name you have. Uh, and then it gets actually SMS and try to dump all the SMS. So it work this function. So how dump SMS look like Go over here. So here 
it goes actually the SMS DB. So it goes to this content. This is the path you can actually get the SMS, on the phone. Uh, kind of SQLite database at the moment. Read address, date, body, text of that, content of that. SMS that you receive, SMS that you sent. Draft SMS things that you haven't sent yet. So pretty much the whole thing in a, you know, um, um, so it takes basically the recent one and start from the recent one and go to the old one. So that was it. And then the next thing here. It takes actually bookmarks, call logs actually, read call logs. Let's see how call logs look like. XML file, go to content URL, get content, then get type, date duration of your call, name and phone number. Dumping B bookmarks. So browser bookmarks. Let's go to browser bookmarks. So yeah, it goes here and get all the title of that URL, the number of visits you had, and create a time of the bookmark. Your favorite website, places that you usually go. Um, like and what else? Browser search, okay. It also try to get even your search, whole bunch of that, everything they can. Search time and date. Date of the time and the keyword actually use for your search. Which keywords you are interested about that? What you are usually search for? Here, try to get your contacts and put an else here that in case that it couldn't read that there was issue there was a contact or there was some restriction or something like that just easily skip them yeah to do not get into trap or show any bug or something like that you just say okay skip that if I can read it just go and let it go skip contact and um, let's go to read contact Contacts, so it goes and read them name, nickname, phone, emails, website, dictionary yeah. here, the calendar to, to find to figure out your dates, your you know, um, appointments. They also check for the Android APK version. If it's old, they go to different routes. If it's newer, they go to different routes. Then they try to read title, beginning time, end time, description, location, and accounts, and so forth. Check for different versions of phone because they might actually save data in different locations.
and while actually is recording that, it also get you know, the network information and longitude, latitude, timestamp to just show them like a map, something maybe like that. Maybe show something like this, I mean, not necessarily that much tangible. To trace down users. So we gather all this information and then prepare to send and invoke that. Let's go to prepare to send. So in prepare to send, um, it sent it basically to this location here. Here is the target machine. I mean, this is because of our educational purposes, but here presumably could be, you know, the target, you know, machine and the port. And we know there is like send data function then open new socket put the set uh, timeout to 30 second ish and put all those data right that there and try to establish a connection via socket so if you design any tool or something and uh, for security analysis or like a you know firewall then you know these ports and if an app try to establish a socket could be one way of that, you know, because all normal apps, even a banking app or messenger app, they also establish socket, you know, so, however, this port here is more exciting, you know, and you can actually sniff that in the network and see what's going on, how is the transaction. Um, so here, so far, it seems it's not actually encrypted transaction. So everything are in kind of XML, um, XML file. So, um, if I go here, send or prepare send, I don't see any encryption. So it just send it normally actually, which is a weak point for, for the app, for this malware, a spider here. And because if you sniff the network, you can also read the whole information. So you can actually trace it down with, with network sniffing, with Wireshark and alternative tools. I uh, made actually new course just for, for explaining that, you know, about network analysis and network security analysis and finding malware and so on on, on, the, on the network without even having the binaries. And even finding the which machine is infected. So if you can actually trap, uh, you know, uh, Wireshark and sniff the whole packet and network, you can actually find who is actually infected. You know, maybe you don't know the boss is actually infected with an app, then you can trace them down and find the phone or device and the company or your, your network, and then you can get the binary and install, you know, working on that and getting more in depth about this. So, uh, here was one actually case here, and um, the fact here is. Here we did a lot of manual, um, you know, heuristic work, just going, clicking, and all about, you know, malware analysis, forensics, all about that. It's mostly about heuristic, gathering information, collecting information, and doing this sort of thing. So there is no any tool that actually gives you all of these things. It relies on your own knowledge and foundation about programming, about cybersecurity, about um, cryptographic, you know, as about network security, and so forth. 
So I would recommend you if you're interested more to know about the man ways, how they work, you can read more resources, books about them. You can also take my courses. You know, I also I'm focused on this area. Um, so um, there is another way actually can make things more simpler for us and simplify the whole process. Um, let me actually uh, put it in a separated video and it's gonna be a short one to tell you okay we've done all these things by hand um, but it's gonna be good if you have like a general you know like a tree that shows us the relationship between functions and allows us to find bottlenecks and so forth so in the next video actually i show you how to take advantage of uh, internal tools provided by Ghidra to basically generate construct such a graph.